Okay, y'all, this is the continuation of safe people, safe places. Some questions that you had is what is a safe person? I think I expound upon that, but I think a few things. Um, three things to look for is to um, see how they can hold a secret. Ask them some questions to see if they'll be honest with you, like with you already kind of mentally knowing what the truth is um, about yourself and see if they'll be honest with you. See how they give it to you. And then I would say, um, I'm a woman of faith, so I can't take that away. See if they'll pray with you. See what their prayer life is like, you know? And I think there's a such thing as growing together because there are some people that are just solid individuals and it's like the, the part that just would make them even super powerful even more super powerful if I could say it that way is the faith piece um so I think that definitely are those are three things that I would say look for the truth honesty um and I would say also I said the prayer piece and then I would also say like pay attention to when y'all go out like you know, is there, are, are y'all always splitting it? If that's what y'all choose to do, then that's fine. But just make sure the responsibility is not all on you. That's all I would say. A safe person. Um, and to see how they're giving. Oh, considering it all. Consider it all. Pay attention to their jokes. That's another thing. Um, I was talking not too long ago, I think on like an Instagram live, but people say their feelings, like their heart spills out and the Lord will allow you and anoint your ears to hear what they really are trying to say if you're paying attention and if you are just kind of moving on the wave of heaven, you know, of the Holy Spirit. But some people are joking and they, they're saying what they mean in their jokes. And some things you can just kind of let slide and, and you don't got to respond to everything, but you definitely can deal accordingly. Like, all right, I know next time I'm going to slow down on calling you to everything. You know, I'm just going to try and make this situation. And some people are like, oh, I think the conversation is necessary. I believe in conversations, but I don't like doing a lot of talking. Especially, you know, conversations that are of the same thing over and over again. Because I don't want to stay in, depre in a depressed space. I don't want to stay in an anxious space. I don't want to stay in an angry space. There is just so much life to live and those relationships contribute to that emotional space that you're in. Um, and even some answers as far as what you're supposed to be doing in life. So I think too, I gave you three and I think I added that fourth one, which the Bible backs it up. I don't know the book and the numbers, but it says, let let everyone see that you're considerate in everything that you do and I always say consider it all so if you see that they're considering a little less than you are I think that that should be considered all right amen praise God that's how I define a safe person I could so go on and go on and go on just I will stop there sometimes God sends angels in your life for many reasons do you think those are this are the people you call safe I think that um, I've come across people who have been like angels. There's a scripture about entertaining uh, strangers or angels unaware or something like that. And I feel like they were sent for that moment, you know, and that moment could have been a couple days. It could have been for that 20 minutes, could have been for that five minutes. It could have been for the year. So absolutely. The question is, do you think those are the people you call safe? Yes, some are permanent angels. And this book has been blessing me. Shout out to the author of this book. I know it's Mr. or Pastor Darius. I forget the last name. But Mel, um, the photographer that I'm always talking about, who I said is like my brother, he told me about this book and it definitely has been blessing me. It's called Relational Intelligence. And it's basically talking about, you know, knowing the difference between your advisors and your assignments and people who are like, you know, there and are supposed to contribute to you or if it's like vice versa. So you should check that book out. It blessed me. But um, do you think those are people you call safe? Yes, there are definitely some angels that are here for a lifetime. And then there are some, you know, that I understood were just there for that five or 20 minutes. And I didn't try to make them into like a lifetime friend, if that makes sense. So it depends on what kind of safe you're talking about. But hopefully I answered the question. 
can we sometimes mistreat safe people we can absolutely mistreat safe people and that's something that i also had to work on um prime example is because of my dating experiences prior to marriage and my husband still has to correct these behaviors and say hey that might have been what you dealt with before you got here but you're not gonna make me pay for what they did and that makes me respect him even more because now it's not so much about him but it's also him wanting me to heal so that we can function in this marriage uh, removing toxic and dysfunctional behaviors that maybe we have taken on to protect ourselves when now that we get to the place that God has ordained or authorized it's not us tainting that pure space or damaging that pure space it's almost like you know how I remember, I'll never forget um, but we stayed in the neighborhood and there were some you know some mentalities that we kind of adapt to or we get used to and things that we do in that space and my dad said hey we moving out here we moved to you know a bigger home what you used to do there you know to try to make things function maybe you used to take some duct tape and wrap it around the toilet so they don't know water coming out we're not doing that here we're gonna call the maintenance man we're gonna get it fixed we will acknowledge the problem but we definitely are not getting ready to make this house look like it's taped together um we're going to adapt a new mentality and so i definitely think that there is a such thing as mistreating people and when we are in denial we'll act like those toxic traits of our own do not exist because we'll just make ourselves right because we knew what happened before but everybody is not operating in that space so I'm speaking from a personal experience yes I've mistreated um, safe people and I've had to apologize and the Lord had to convict me about that so I do think that's a such thing I think also um, because we are so used to giving we'll say oh I don't want you to give me nothing and it's like you probably didn't even mean to come off that way but it came off that way because that's what I used to tell the last person that thought I was trying to use I don't need nothing from you and it's like well don't say that to me because I also am receiving it from the place that I'm in you know so those are I think it's definitely a certain thing that we have to be careful of. I was just telling the sister you need to be mindful of what you say just because you can take that way of communication that doesn't mean everybody else can take that that way of communication like be careful how you speak to people be careful how you tell people they breast stink be careful how you tell people is big or overweight be careful how you tell people they their shoes are ugly like don't just walk up to me and say baby I'm should like really filter how you say things to me and even the bible says that so that should let you know that you're not crazy when you like did they not think twice about it now that could be a growing opportunity with whoever you're in that relationship or covenant with which i've seen shamika and i or courtney and i or even which is, it's a blessing and i think what makes my parents timeless leaders is that even when they are you know in covenant with young people they can hear like maybe we should make this adjustment we can make this change or this is why we don't say it this way anymore because it can be offensive to this culture and i think that's what make them timeless leaders um and, and we like to stay connected so hopefully that blesses you to advance yourself to just make sure you are connected that could be on a parental level it could be on the auntie uncle level or whatever it is sisters whatever it is we need to level up in our relational intelligence and i think the world would be so much of a better place if we were considerate of each other but yes i think it's a such thing as mistreating safe people um can safe people sometimes mistreat us absolutely um because we are human so there's always room for human error and this is not me talking from a place of i know it all but it's me experiencing both sides like i was once one time the toxic person and the person that had been mistreated and i then was the person that had mistreated other people but there's room for human error and we're not god so we're consistent but as my dad say we're not constant only god can be constant only numbers can be constant if i can say it that way um so i think that yes you should should allow some room for us to grow together because if we have it all together then what's the point of us living we the, the time would be up you know it's nothing else for us to figure out but there's always room for us to learn so I absolutely think that there's a such thing but I don't think that when it's time to cut off or make adjustments or remove just because they mistreat you or let me say this mistreating versus yeah consistent versus constant so mistreating versus like a mistake 
Like, I think it's a such thing as, you know what, I didn't think of it that way and I do apologize. Now, if you got somebody that's constantly doing something and they don't know how to apologize or accept responsibility, great example, I remember dating someone and I would be like, you don't see how this is wrong? I apologize if it hurts you. No, I need, like I get that, we can do that sometimes, but I need you to understand why it's wrong. You know, so if you don't understand that it's wrong, I think that's a red flag. So hopefully I, I answered your question. Who do you consider safe in your life? Um, so many people. Of course, I always talk about my parents, my grandparents, um, my uncle, of course, my husband. He's like number one. I live with him. So um, he's very safe. My two friends that I talk about all the time. And then I have friends, you know, now that are just kind of around the world. And I'm learning that, yes, there's a blessing and there's a difference in quantity versus quality. But I am learning that there are so many people in the body of Christ that you can just be so blessed by. And um, because I thought it was just, oh, all my friends is just these four people and that's just it. I didn't, I wasn't able to grasp the other answers that were in all of these other relationships and you know, that I learned or were able to come in contact with in my travel or in ministry or whatever it is. So I'll stop there, that's enough. Hopefully I blessed y'all. Maybe we can do a life, a live another time, but make sure y'all click the notification button, subscribe, do all of that goodness. I just thank y'all for being open to listening to me talk and hopefully you know that I am not trying to become a life coach. I'm just trying to share the gospel of Jesus Christ and the solutions that this um, relationship has uh, provided for me. And I hope that it's blessing you. I just don't want to be stingy with all of the goodness that God has allowed me to experience. So I hope it's blessing you and setting you free. And um, yeah, click the notifications button, all of that good stuff. And make sure y'all stay connected with me. Love you. Bye.